Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every single Wednesday to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. Today's video is all about my best tips and tricks for making really awesome memory bears. This is part of my memory bear series that I have going on here on my channel and you can find the entire series playlist linked down below in the description box as well as right up here in the upper corner of the screen in the information icon. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure you do so by clicking the red subscription button down below so you don't miss out on my future tutorials. So let's get right into those tips and most importantly is selecting the right pattern. Now I've already done an entire separate video on this that's linked down below in that playlist um, but I'll just touch on the highlights. Make sure your pattern has at least like six pattern pieces to it. Mine actually has nine. I like to use this one right here. Having those extra pattern pieces they give the bear the dimension that you're looking for and also make sure that the finished bear size is a size that you are happy with. This bear finishes at 18 inches. Make sure you have the pattern that you want before you get started at all. Now the size of your pattern also needs to correspond with the materials that you want to use. If you just have say one baby sleeper and then maybe one onesie, um, obviously you are not going to have enough material to make an 18 inch bear so you will need to either um, add some extra materials, maybe a receiving blanket or two, or you'll need to find a pattern that works with the lesser amount of materials, maybe for a six inch bear or a nine inch bear. Um, so it really depends on what you have to work with as well as to what pattern will work for you. Now I mentioned you can use you know baby clothes and things like that and so other things that you can use for memory bears are shirts or pants or a military uniform or a bridesmaid's dress or um, just any outfit that is very special to you. It doesn't have to be regular yardage of fabric. It also doesn't have to be clothes. Just anything that is a fabric material that is special to you can make a great memory bear. But do not use those special items to make your very first bear. Your very first bear needs to be made out of just leftover fabric that you have. Um, you want to make sure that you understand the entire process, how to make the bear, and that you know it's going to turn out successfully before you cut into those special items. So after you've made that practice bear and you are ready to use the special materials that you've picked out, the first thing I like to do is make a list. I list out all of the pieces of the bear. So there are like the ear fronts, the ear back, the face center, the face sides, the arm top, the arm bottom, and so on. I list them all out on a note card and then I write down exactly what material I want each of those pieces to be cut out of. And this is just so easy for me to keep track of while I'm working. I can mark them off as I cut them out and I know that I've already pre-planned it and I won't accidentally um, cut too many from one material and then um, not have enough to make the bear how I want it to look. I also like to note if there's any detailing I want to include such as a pocket on the body front or some buttons on the arm or a certain patch somewhere. I want to make sure to note that and that way I don't get carried away cutting out my pieces and forget that there was special details that I wanted to include. Next up, interface every single piece. This keeps your materials from stretching or warping while you're working with them. It also gives some stabilizer to thin or fragile fabrics and it just helps your finished bear have a better overall look to it. Now once you get more experience, if you make several bears, you can probably skip the interfacing after a while. I actually still interface all of my bears just because I like the look it gives them and they don't fray while I'm working with all the intricate details and all of that. The fabric doesn't start fraying so I don't have to worry about that and I think it's just one extra step that is totally worth it. Then trace your pattern pieces onto the interfaced side of the bear unless you are needing to include certain details and you need to, you know, be looking at the fabric from the front side to make sure you are getting those details placed exactly where you want. But I like to use a good marking pen and just trace around my pattern pieces onto the interface side. Um, my pattern pieces are on plastic. I've copied them over to a thin plastic so that tiny bit of dimension to them helps make the tracing go so much faster. I just run the pin right along the outside of it and it is so much quicker. I do have another video about transferring your patterns to plastic and that is linked right up there in the information icon in the upper corner of the screen. If you are working with stripes or plaids or other directional fabrics like that, try to match up those designs. And now I know this is not always possible, um, but if you can, try to match them up on the 
face pieces where they meet at the center seam as well as the body front. Um, just do your best to try to get those to line up. It doesn't always work out perfect, but um, if they're close, that's better than being completely off. And if you're not able to match them up at all, at least make sure your patterns are all going in the same direction. Also remember that you have to flip pattern pieces over. So if you need a right side of the face and a left side of the face, trace one pattern piece with the writing facing up and then flip it over so the writing is facing down to trace the other one so you have a right and a left. And um, yeah, I, I forgot to do that on one of my bears. So I only had legs that were facing one direction and that just didn't work at all. We've all been there, so learn from my mistake and flip your pattern pieces over to make opposite sides. Then after you've traced all of your pieces, just cut them out right inside of your marked line because when you're tracing around the pieces, you do add a tiny bit to the measurement because of like the width of the plastic and the width of the pin, you know, and all that. So cut them out just inside the marked lines so they are still at the right size. Now onto the sewing, set your sewing machine to a smaller stitch length and this will be helpful because when your bear is completed and you're stuffing it, if you have those smaller stitches, it's less likely for the seams to kind of pull apart a little bit to where you can see the thread between the stitches. Take your time while sewing and sew as smoothly as possible around curves and maintain accurate seam allowances and stop with the needle down and lift the presser foot to adjust the pieces as often as needed. I actually did an entire separate video that is step by step everything you need to do to sew a memory bear and I'll have that video linked right up there in the information icon so if you don't even know where to start with sewing a pattern that video is going to be the video that will be so super helpful for you this video right here is just the bonus extra tips on top of that to make your bear from good to great so some people like to use something like 25 straight pens to sew the foot to the leg they like to get every bit of it lined up before they start sewing it all and to be honest I don't do that um, I actually find that to be harder and like give me anxiety trying to match up an oval with the leg and all of that beforehand so honestly I just match up the dots on the foot with the seam lines on the leg and add a clip there and then I just start sewing and I adjust it as I go. I take a stitch or two and I lift my presser foot and adjust the two fabrics and then I take another stitch or two and I adjust them a little more and kind of just ease the foot into the leg as I go and I found that to be a lot easier um, but that is definitely a personal preference on that. It is up to you. You can go the loads and loads of pens route or you can go with the adjusting as you go like I do. Make sure to snip all of your curved seam allowances so this is especially important around the face and nose area the feet and the paws where there is the sharper curves and what you want to do is just cut snips into your seam allowance about every one eighth to one quarter of an inch making sure not to cut through your stitching line so this next tip i actually learned the hard way um if you want your bear to look slightly off to the side and have a little more personality like this guy how you do that is you match up the center front face seam with the edge of the arm instead of the center front of the body. I did that by accident, but I actually think he looks really, really cute looking off to the side. So that's just a bonus tip. If you want him to have personality and kind of look different ways, try matching up with the edge of the arm. And I, I still got to finish this guy. but. I just wanted to share that. I thought he was super cute. Yeah. The pattern that I use suggests using shank buttons for the eyes and then felt covered with embroidery for the nose. And I'm not a fan of that. Um, I like to use the safety eyes and noses because I think they're cuter, they're faster, and they're more permanent in my opinion. And, um, yeah, so these are a really good option instead of what the patterns often tell you to use. And I get mine at Hobby Lobby. I'll have links down below for 
the ones I get if you want to check them out. And I also have a video linked down below that is exactly how to install the safety eyes and noses in the best way. When you're installing the eyes and noses, make sure to use the spots that are marked in the pattern. Those have been tested and they know the best spots to place the eyes so that they have the best look. So that's exactly where the pattern told me to place the eyes and I think it's adorable. After your bear is sewn together, it is time to stuff and stuff it firmly. I like to buy the Fairfield Polyfill stuffing in the five and 10 pound boxes using coupons at Joann's. And what I do is I start with stuffing the nose and I stuff it super firmly so the face has a really nice shape to it. And then I finish stuffing the face firmly as well. And then I move on to the feet, stuff them really firmly, and then a little looser as I go up the legs. And then the arms, I stuff the hands really firmly, and then a little looser as I go up. And then the body is kind of like a mix between stuffed firmly, but also still a little squishy. Um, that's kind of hard to explain, but see, he's got a little squish, whereas like his feet, they're pretty firm. Um, and you can kind of separate your stuffing as you are working with it, and this will help it to fill in those little areas better and not be like in wads inside your bear. But you definitely don't want to overstuff your bear to where the seams are just trying to burst open. So you have to kind of find that perfect balance between nicely stuffed but not bursting open to where you can't even stitch up the stuffing holes at the end. And when you're happy with how your bear is stuffed, then you do want to stitch up the openings that you stuffed through. There are five of them on this style of bear. There's one in the back here that I've already sewn up and then one in each leg and one in each arm. And I do have a separate video all about how to do the ladder stitch. That is the stitch that I prefer to use. It is almost invisible after you've sewn it in and it's just a really great one. So you can find the tutorial for the ladder stitch linked right up here in the information icon. So after you've sewn your memory bear, make sure to take some pictures of it and give it a hug and just be proud of what you've accomplished. Um, I am so proud every time I finish a memory bear, even if they're not for me, just, I just love making them and they are so special. And I would love to see the pictures of the ones that you make and you can share them either on my Whitney Sews Facebook page or on Instagram with the hashtag Whitney Sews. Those are all the tips that I have today for sewing really great memory bears. If you have any questions or other areas that I didn't cover that you still need some help on, leave them in the comments down below and I can do another video in the future. And the playlist that I mentioned several times in this video, it's going to be linked right over here to the side. Don't forget to hit like and share this video if any part of it was helpful for you today. And until next time, happy sewing.